Hi everybody, I just wanted to make a quick video uh, to bring some encouragement to people. This time of year is really, really difficult for so many people. Um, people that experience loneliness, people that are dealing with depression, sometimes people are suicidal. Um, I'm, me, myself, I've done counseling for people. I'm a minister, I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. and um, Along with teaching people the Bible, many, many times people need support. Uh, people need to know that they're loved, that somebody's on their side. And it's a tough thing for people to accept. Sometimes people feel that they're just not worthy of being loved. Maybe they feel they've done something that's so horrible that they can never be accepted or loved by anyone. Well, I hope you'll spend a few minutes with me, listening to me. I have some great things to share with you. And the reason that I came up with this video actually was because I gave some encouragement to a young person just the other day and that person told me they wished that um, they had recorded what I said to uh, so they could play it whenever they needed that encouragement when they needed that reminder to know that they really are loved so I thought that was a great idea and I thought well why just make it for one person why not share it with anybody who could really use some comfort someone to give them a little caring and to uh, help them see how truly valuable and loved they are so with that, let me tell you a little bit about the experience I had the other day. And this person was uh, hurt by somebody that he really loved, and he was depressed. And unfortunately, this person, like, like many people who deal with depression, have been victims in the past of uh, abuse, whether it's uh, emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, so many things. And when people really internalize that, they feel like, like they're dead inside, like they have no reason to live. and um, Or if they're okay, the minute something goes wrong, those feelings come right back. They have no worth anymore. And I want to tell you that that's really not true. It's, it's the opposite, the wrong way of thinking. And I'm, I'm going to give you some proof of that. So with this person, after he was telling me those things, I asked him, I said, well, let's, let's use an example. Um, let's say that we were going to put you up for sale, uh, let's say on eBay as a piece of merchandise, what would you put your price at? And he just gave me a blank look and he really thought about it for a minute. And I don't know, maybe four minutes goes by and I said, well, so what do you think? A thousand dollars, a million dollars, a billion dollars. I just kept saying out these numbers and, and he just looked at me and he said, no, he says, I, I really can't place a value on myself. I don't see myself as worth anything. So I told him, I said, okay, well, I know that you care for me. What would you put my price at? And he looked at me and he said, I couldn't. I said, you're, you're worth so much that, that no money could, could pay your price. So that was really touching to my heart. But I told him, I said, well, you're right about that. I said, but there was something that paid for me and something that paid for you. And I think you just need to be reminded of that. So again, as I said, I'm a minister and I, I go to the scriptures to, to teach and to bring encouragement. So I'm going to do that for you today too. So the first thing to think about, if we go to the book of John, the gospel account, it's John chapter 3 and verse 16. And this is a scripture that many people of many uh, different faiths are familiar with. And it says there in John 3.16, it says, For God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone exercising faith in him might not be destroyed but have everlasting life. So I told my students, I said, really think about that. Jesus Christ, second only to Jehovah God himself. So Jesus being the second most powerful being in the entire universe. Look down at you and said, you were so priceless, so valuable, so treasured, that both he and God himself decided that you were worth Christ sacrificing his life for. So really let that sink in for a minute. You're so precious that the most powerful, second most powerful being in the entire universe that will ever exist gave his life to pay the cost for you something really precious but that's only one thing maybe you're not very religious but um, 
there's more we can talk about. The Bible has so many things to help people with depression and, and, and not feeling valuable. Another one I want to share with you is in uh, 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And starting in verse 26. This was the Apostle Paul trying to encourage uh, this congregation in Corinth. But it applies to all human beings that really love God and want to serve Him. And this is what Paul says for those who felt kind of lowly and unworthy. He says, For you see his calling of you, brothers, that there are not many wise in a fleshly way, not many powerful, not many of noble birth, but God chose the foolish things of the world to put the wise men to shame. And God chose the weak things of the world to put the strong things to shame. And God chose the insignificant things of the world and the things looked down on, the things that are not, to bring to nothing the things that are. So if you feel like you're really unlovable, unworthy, I want you to see here in these words, God himself tells you you're exactly what he's looking for, exactly what he's wanting to love in this world. A crushed heart, a, uh, a lowly spirit, the scripture says, is something that God will not despise. It's something that God looks into and he says, you're exactly what I want. So I hope you take that to heart too. But there's more than that. Let's talk about love itself. The important thing to know about love, sometimes people confuse love and sex as the same thing. And it's important to know that they are not the same. Somebody might be willing to share their body with you. It doesn't mean that they're going to automatically give you their heart along with that. And if you don't believe that, just look around the world today. You see people hooking up left and right, and there's, there's no love involved in that. So to be loved, you need someone who really sincerely cares about you in your good times and your bad times. Somebody who's devoted to you. Somebody who uh, keeps you on their mind all the time. And um, let me show you what the Bible has to say about love. First of all, let's go to, uh, still in 1 Corinthians, we're going to go to chapter 13. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. This is a description straight from the Bible about what love is. It says, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous. It does not brag, does not get puffed up, does not behave indecently, does not look for its own interests, does not become provoked, it does not keep account of the injury, it does not rejoice over unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So these descriptions might be very different from, from what general people think love really is. But you notice it, it tolerates, it puts up with a lot. Uh, an older translation of the Bible said that love is long-suffering. Meaning that maybe there's something going on that you really don't appreciate. Something that kind of puts you out a little bit. But you take it, you deal with it because you see the uh, the outcome in the end. That people aren't worth throwing away. People are worth fighting for if you love them. And I hope you feel that way about yourself. That uh, sometimes, sometimes we're afraid that if we open up to people, we're going to get hurt. So we kind of put this wall in front of ourselves. We just try to keep people out. But you know, if we do that, then we're never going to have the comfort and the love that we're looking for especially in times when we're desperate and depressed. So if there are people that you care for, that you're just afraid to, to let them in, take that chance. What have you got to lose? You know, there are people in this world who care for you. If you think about it, whatever age you are, somebody had to love you and take care of you and, and raise you up to the point you're in today. So there is at least one person that loves you. And if that person has passed away, then it's time to find other people who care for you too. And it's important to know, as far as family is concerned, 
family is not just biological. Family is anyone who loves you, cares for you, wants to be with you, and looks out for your interests. Let's talk about the love that God has for us again. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. This verse is 38 and 39. He says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor governments, nor things now here, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creation will be able to separate us from God's love that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So again, we've already considered how much God loves us, how much Jesus loves us, and now we see that nothing can take that away. Let's talk about now dealing with depression for a little bit and how we can overcome that. I'm going to go to Philippians chapter 4. And verses 6 and 7. This is something to do. If the world's really got you down to your knees right now, if everything's falling apart around you and you don't know where to turn, and you're, you're down on your knees, you're begging for help, you're in a perfect position to pray to God and, and speak to Him. Have a listening ear. And these verses talk about that. It says, Don't be anxious over anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, along with thanksgiving, let your petitions be made known to God. In the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mental powers by means of Christ Jesus. So we see there, if we really pour our heart out to God, let Him know exactly what's going on, ask for His help. It says that His peace, peace that's going to come to you beyond all comprehension, beyond all human understanding, it's going to come into you and safeguard your heart. It says that Jesus himself will be involved in that. So that's a comforting thing to think about, too. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I hope that those things really bring you some encouragement, um, especially if, if you're hurting. I mean, sometimes people already have a rope around their neck, they have a blade up to their wrist, or they're ready to pop those pills. I pray that before you do that, you really take the time to listen to this, play it over a couple of times, and really appreciate how valuable you are, how precious you are in God's eyes, if not in anyone else's that you can think of. The fact that you are able to love somebody else, it's because you were taught how to love by someone who loved you first. So remember that, that you are cared for. And if you need to find somebody, if, if the company you keep isn't worthy of that love, then go out and find others. There are This is a big world. There are people around who will genuinely care for you. So I hope that this video again brings you some encouragement. Play it back over and over again if you need to. Uh, as the person that I helped the other day wanted, he wanted to just hear it over and over again. It soothed him. And I hope that that soothes you too. And definitely if you know somebody that can benefit from this, I hope you'll share it with them too. Uh, and let them know how much you love them. Call somebody up. You know, call them up. Go pay them a visit. Give them a hug. Hugs aren't uh, lethal. I call them painkillers. They, uh, they make us feel alive. They, they take some of our suffering away. So be sure to do that. Reach out to people. The sad thing is many people who deal with depression have suicidal thoughts and, and addictions who lose control. They keep it hidden. And we don't want to do that because what happens is the people who really love you don't find out until it's already too late and you're gone. So... Let people know. The people that you love, get in touch with them. Let them know how you feel. And if you know somebody, again, who's suffering, or who you think might be suffering, reach out to them. Share this with them. So I hope that gives you some comfort and some help and gets you through another day. Take care.